Okay. So there's a basket by my aunt. There's Navajo Mountain in the background. Uh, I don't know who made the necklace. Maybe they just got it out of pond or something. <laughs> so uh, we already went over the clans at the beginning of class. Uh, a little sticker that uh, I got uh, done in Window Rock. So this is me again. Yep. So, yep. yep. You too. So we're related then. Yes. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay. So uh, people always tell me, you know, I run into people who don't want to talk about family. Uh, or they say, you know, it's not nice to talk about um, the dead ones or, or, or whatnot. And yes and no to, I always say yes or no to whatever they're saying because um, it's all about presentation. There's a certain way to go about asking about those who have passed on. Um, uh, and um, it gets to be uh, a fine line that you have to walk when, when you want to start asking questions. Uh, and so you won't just go up to someone and say, tell me about uh, so-and-so. Um, you, you have to go about and say, um, you know, tell me about the one who used to be your father. Um, don't just go up and say, tell me about your father, tell me about, you know, whatever his name is. Um, uh, so... Uh, you always have to be careful in that aspect, and plus, you'll always get those people who just don't want to say anything no matter what. Uh, so, um, presentation. Take them a nice treat or something. Maybe they'll, they'll start talking. <laughs> Take them over some pinions. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I have my sister and I, well, we come from Chief Manuelito outfit, and we're trying to find out, like, some of his brothers and stuff. Um, so my sister and I went up to Nav uh, Sheep Springs, mm -hmm. where, and uh, she took a tape recorder, and I took my paper and pencil, and she, she, was, she was getting up there. She passed away last year at the age of 113, but uh, when it was about, like, eight years prior, and... <laughs> We started to ask her questions. She just got after us. Yeah. She said, "Yeah, the lot of no na ash, the lot of everything. The world is going different. If you yeah. want to know something, go up to Owl Springs and talk to them." Jaapa just jumps. <laughs> we stop right. <laughs> oh yeah. It's yeah. It's she all about. We're not supposed to bother. Bother them. Yeah. It's all about how you you go about it. And some people just don't want to share because, like I said, it's, there's a certain way to go about and, and asking for information. and uh, So it gets kind of difficult because you'll get people who don't even know and they'll just say, nope. Mm -hmm. Her daughter tried to help us too, but she didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. And a lot of the things, as soon as um, the brothers <coughs> died, they burn everything. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know that part. I yeah. found that out recently. They'll, they'll burn it. They'll burn uh, artifacts and whatever is associated with them, or they'll bury it. Yes. Uh, so it does become under trees or more difficult. Scattered. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's why people usually try to get there before they pass <laughs> on. <laughs> Corey, one of the, the experiences that I had was in, I was <coughs> doing some research on findagrave.com, uh -huh. and um, there was an individual, we have a lot of people, and we do that, and we've done it in, in, our, in our ward, is we've gone to the local cemetery, and we've actually um, gone and recorded every birth and death record that mm -hmm. we could find, you know, we recorded all the information on all the headstones and we were going to upload it up to um, findagrave.com mm -hmm. and share, 
But one of the experiences that I had was I went through and I was actually doing research for somebody and I came across, um, I did find an individual and I found, I found a picture of the Grays and then some family information. But down in, there's a place where you can actually leave a comment and in the comment the family was very offended that I somebody had, you know, uh, put that information on the um, findagrave.com and they had requested that that information and all the records be taken off that website. <coughs> so we stopped, you know, once we found that, then I just, I just didn't <coughs> upload any more information on there because I didn't want to offend anybody. I, want, I wanted people to help me and, you know, <coughs> and I want them to understand why I'm doing this. That's and you'll just see not, that quite that often. Just, no, that's the thing of what the Jewish do. You know, they blocked all of the things with the Holocaust. So, so this is not something that's just related it's to Native Americans a, or yeah, anything like it's that. Not it's not just Navajo. It's Africans. It's, uh, it's the um, Hadassic Jews. The, but it's know, the idea so. of wanting to protect personal information. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, yeah, you, you see that a lot, and it does happen quite often. And like you were saying, it's not just a, a Navajo issue. It's a, you know, it's, it's all, all across the board. It's just that you work with the people and let them know uh, what you're yeah. doing and be very uh, transparent is, is the whole thing of why you're trying to do this. Because technically it is a, you know, a public cemetery and you're, you have free access to do that, but you'll have individuals who won't get upset. Well, when you... When I was doing my genealogy, I wanted to go on the mesas because for my first and second and third mesa and take pictures of my where my relatives, my grandparents were raised, uh, it was hard to take a picture of your plate. The, the Hopis wouldn't let you take yeah, a picture. They don't let you take pictures. So when there. I would go in the house and my relatives were there and on their walls they would have their pictures of their family and mm -hmm. I took pictures in the house without letting the uh, people in the community see me taking pictures of, of the I said well this is where my grandmother was born or my parents were born this is I said how can I have a history and I had to sit down and take a piece of paper and draw yep. I had to draw the best I could of where, what Mason my parents were, because I said, this is for me. And when I kept telling them, this is for me, for my family, how am I going to preserve this for my children? And you have to be very, very careful with them, because they can be very uh, angry. I went to their homes where I had to drive on the dirt road. I had to have people that could talk, Colby, I could understand it. And there would be somebody coming in another truck saying, hey, what are you doing there? And I said, this is where my great-great-grandfather lived, or my great-great-grandmother lived and everything. I used to play out here, visit, and they, and they want to question. They want to ask you, what are you doing here? Yeah. And I tell people, when you do come into uh, contact with uh, people who are wondering about what you're doing and why right. you're doing it, right or object to you doing it, I just tell them to be respectful and just find someone, uh, just go to the next person and ask the next person if you can. Find someone until you can find someone who says yes. Yeah. <laughs> but always respect uh, their wishes. You, you, yes, if yeah. they tell you, you know, they won't uh, let you, that's fine. Yeah. Corey, one last comment. I think our experience, you know, working with the Native people is that uh, the thing is very dynamic. Uh, we oftentimes make absolutes, but most of the natives, uh, uh, Navajos right now, really can't tell you anything about traditional ways of life, mm -hmm. other than what they read in Tlacon or what they studied in the schools and whatnot. Because families don't really do it. And so, you know, the, a lot of things that were present, say, in the 1950s, are not necessarily so here nor are they like it was in the 1970s, with the exceptions of a couple of, 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 of uh, tribal groups. And, and the, uh, the Pueblos are the ones who uh, is still really taking the time to teach their, you know, uh, their children a lot about those things. And uh, 
uh, the rest, uh, you know, we've turned them over to um, uh, um, HBO, I guess is a good way to say it. We've turned, we've turned the kids over to uh, watch, having them watch, you know, uh, TV and having them run around. And, and, uh, and I think uh, what I found is that when you talk with people, they, they're pretty clueless about what, you know, it's been taboo in the past. And, and, and you can, uh, what that does is it allows you to uh, uh, do genealogy uh, in a really respectful way, I think is the point I'm trying to make. It, because you you can explain why you know why we're doing this because we believe that you know it existed before and that we're going to continue to live and that we're there's some saving ordinance that we feel is very sacred and that this is the reason why we're doing it, not just for curiosity's sake though that's a part of it that really drives the work that we do. Well, there's a lot of people who do it. Um, besides religious reasons, mm -hmm. I mean, it's to help self-identify who they are. Because like, you'll run into people, if you tell them, yeah, I'm LDS and I'm doing family history, they'll shut down. Yeah. So uh, it's all about presentation, how you present yourself. Um, I didn't grow up on the reservation. Um, I grew up on the reservation, and uh, I... A lot of my years, I, you know, grew up in the Hopi, Hopi and then uh, Zia Pueblo, and I've, you know, learned their language, I don't know the language, and then it was my Zia grandma who had told me that, you know, that I was, um, to some certain years in my childhood, I, went, I didn't know I was Native American until I met a friend in school who was Native American. And I was so happy about it, and I ran out and told my dad about it. And uh, my dad told me that I was Indian too, and he told me, you know, I would try it. So I told my Zia grandfather about it. And he told me about, you know, the Navajo people, telling me that I come from a very, you know, unique you know, background, uh, prestigious people, and I should, you know, go back to the reservation. It took me almost seven years taking classes. It took me seven, almost seven years to relearn my language. And that's right. To this day, I have not granted yet. You were saying about, you know, um, how we should, you know, we should be careful how we talk or how we ask questions, um, you know, concerning about the dead. So how would you say that in now? Because I am trying to find myself. I'm trying to find my relatives. And like this gentleman say, a lot of them do not want to talk about, you know, the past when they shut down and they leave you blank. So how would I go about and ask for someone about, you know, my grandparents or my mother? I'll just keep asking. I mean, how would I say it in Navajo? How would you ask in Navajo yeah. mm -hmm. about someone who's already passed? Yeah. So like I, like I was saying here is that, you know, instead of just saying, you know, tell me about my father, you need to say, you know, the guy who, who was my father. Yeah, but I wonder um, so you're not, how you would say it in Navajo. Well, how you translate it. Yeah. Someone want to translate, translate that for her? There's a lot of ways you can do it. Yeah. I mean, uh, you could say, you can ask them, uh, whoever it is you're talking with, just ask them, uh, yeah. you know, just ask them how they say it. Yeah. Lots of ways to say it. Yeah. Too many ways to say it. Yeah. Um, I went through a lot of the same things that everyone's talking about. Um, I would go visit my relatives, like my grandparents, and they they wouldn't share the information. But as I got to spend more time with them and um, get to know them a little bit better, and I always made sure that I was very prayerful about it, even yeah. fasted and put their names in the temple, and and for myself also. And I think that was the key thing for me because that really helped me a lot because um, um, even people that would come around would tell my grandpa, 
um, don't give them any information unless they pay for it, you know. Oh, yeah. And this and this and that. And my grandfather didn't like that. And he would say, And so he would stand up on that for me. And that really um, helped open the doors because then I was able to record uh, my grandpa's history and get all the information that I want. I got a lot of information just from my grandfather and my grandmother. And that really helped. And it's just the relationship that you set up with them. That is a very, very important. Um, that you're that you draw close to them, and then that way, that, that really opens doors. That's the main thing. Yeah. And that's one thing, well, that's why I was kind of half teasing, is when you go visit people, take them a gift. Yeah, it and, does work, uh, yes. and, it, and it helps soften them a little bit. But, you know, you do get people who will ask, you know, for money. And, uh, and whether if you go that route, that's up to you. So. And I would just tell my grandfather, she um um, and I would get them talking about the kind of people yeah. they were and, and about my grandfather. And then before you know it, they're just opening up everything yeah. and telling you. And, and, that. and that's when you hope you have a recorder on yeah, hand. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> hitting it under your jacket or something. He knew yeah. I was recording this. Yeah. Like yeah. I always say let people know that you're recording yes. if you're going to record yes. because yes. Uh, technically you could get in, you know, <laughs> it could go against you. But uh, let's go through this real quick. Can I make a comment? Sure. Uh, I thought you were ignoring me. Oh, no. No. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, there's a couple of comments. Uh, when we have gone, one of the things that is just routine is you don't, you will, you will automatically be turned down the first time. Yeah. So you go back again and you go back again. Fourth time you usually get, you usually get some response. And, and there's a reason for that. You go back and you ask respectfully, you go back and, and ask again. But um, one of the things that was really interesting is that when we asked, had totally surprised us and shocked us that the woman who was asked about, you know, because we were looking at the, the, an extended family tree and we were wanting to get the, the children and the grandchildren uh, of the siblings and cousins and, and uh, the response was, what do you want to know about my sex life for? <laughs> yeah. Talk about shock. <laughs> that was not what we were looking for. But another thing that we had really good success that, that was that we, if we start with pictures, like uh, like you said, if you start with pictures, or if you ask, you know, do you have some old, old family photos, you know, we're looking, and that really starts the ball rolling. And then not only do you have the pictures, but we, in, in one place, we went with a computer and a scanner and a hot spot so that we could get into, you know, all of that, and we were out in the middle of the res. And we spent probably about five hours just scanning photos and cataloging and listening while, while uh, 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 she talked about who they were. And then, and then it was just story after story after story. So there were a team of, I think, four of us or three of us. One who would scan and another one who would, was taking notes and catalog, cataloging the pictures as we went. And, uh, and another one, and it was me, that could just kind of keep prompting to keep her talking. And we were there, I'll bet, four hours or five hours. Yeah. It's amazing some of the things you can find and learn about. And you had a question in the Broncos? Oh, I was going to say, um, the family thing, family, I, one of the biggest key I, I think about is um, building a relationship of trust with them. Yeah. I'll oh, bring out the missionary. And missionary guy. Yeah. <laughs> but, Build a relationship with trust. See, with, with my family, I, I ask questions sometimes, but my one uncle would say, come visit me again on another thing. and just spend a whole day talking about it. Yeah. But they know the purpose behind it. So. Definitely. And there are people out there, it's just catching them in the right mood and on the right day. And the... Well, there's three things I do. I do my genealogy, and I have pictures in their genealogy, 
And I also make a genealogy sheet for them. Mm -hmm. And I say, I'm bringing something to you. And I go to the office, the head office, and whatever it is on, in the, in, on the reservation. And I give the president or the governor, and I give him, him another sheet. And I show him all the generations of our family and his family. And then they mellow a little bit. Then I go in the car and bring my jellies and jams, my watermelon, my <laughs> corn, everything I have in the truck, and I give it to them. And then they they sit down and they'll eat with me, and then they'll share their food, like their peaky and everything. And then I will. They go through this, and then they. But you know what they say about the third time? They'll say we've been praying for you to come. And that opened the door. And that's how I've been, I've been able to get as much as I have is by them praying for me and I praying for them so we can open that relationship yeah. together. Yeah. It's a labor of love. Yes. It really do, is. Do you have these on the uh, Not this chart. Uh, but the chart will be sent and he's going to put it on the, the wiki page for, for Paige okay. here. Well, on the so, um, LDS here I'll pass up these. Okay. Uh, I'll start out over here. These are terms that we use for family members. It's two pages. You'll have, um, your maternal line, different names, you know, grandma, grandpa, great grandma, grandpa, great great grandma, grandpa, um, what else? Your maternal aunts, your maternal uncles, your mom's brothers and sisters, uh, your uh, maternal cousins, uh, all the different terminology. Then you got your paternal. Uh, line and all the different terminology for those guys. Different terms for family members. Your parents, um, your children, husband, wife. Uh, how to make a difference between if they were married or just living together. Um, Brothers, sisters, cousins, so on and so on. In-laws, if you want to deal with those guys, there's terms for them. Uh, Mother-in-law, uh, father-in-law, uh, other family members. Um, so, uh, hopefully that will help out in a little bit. One area that one area that I've noticed is like online people uh, uh, talking about this is uh, one uh, one that is uh, your uh, on your paternal side. Yeah. Let's say your dad's brother. Yeah. Uh, some people I've noticed maybe it's geographical on the reservation. I don't know, but uh, uh -huh. is yeah, uh, just would be uh, in my area. Yeah, would be my stepfather. Okay. But I think the rest of the reservation, or oh, some of the, it would be something else. Well, would be would be uh, my my, uh, my dad's uh, brother. It, it could be geographical. It could be clan. Kind of tweaks everything. Uh, it could be just the closeness uh, of the relationship. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, even there we have some. Hopefully, yeah. It just makes it as clear as mud. Towards Grey Mountain, Triple Eight, Shabisha, the genetic. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we call them. Shabiz is my yeah. dad's brother. Oh, uh, mm. is my stepfather. Yeah. So, yeah, it all depends. So, 
doesn't help a whole lot, but yeah, it all just depends on a number of things. With the Holmi clan, if you tell them you're for, what clan you're from, the beginning they see you and they ask you what clan you, they sort of have it all memorized where the clans came from. From this village, this village, and you're you're related to us in this village. So the clan is sort of like a magic word. Yeah. Father-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done the clans? Uh, usually for the clans, I'll refer them to a website because that's a whole lot harder. Do you have that website? Yeah. Uh, it's on the family wiki okay. under clans. So, um, yeah. I, I'm really glad you're doing the um, a little bit on the um, clans because I know that that's really important yeah. to them. So, um, as you're talking with them and you tell them who they are, and they'll say, Joshua Chad and Leila, and they'll open the doors yeah. again right there. And that's one thing I tell people to remember is when you are doing genealogy, you have to make a difference to make sure that they're blood related and not clan related when dealing with genealogy because sometimes people mix up the two. But when dealing with uh, records, uh, I always tell people keep in mind uh, naming customs, um, the old school names. Uh, usually have Bach in it somewhere um, for the men and women. Uh, people have really moved away from that, uh, but it's not completely gone, so a lot of people still use it. But um, there's that. Uh, we all recognize the nicknames that people have used. Um, so like a lot of cultures within the world, Navajos are very uh, descriptive people. Uh, whether if you see that as a bad thing or a good thing. Uh, but, just some uh, examples here. Uh, names that could be influenced by their parents or their characteristic uh, issues. I know a, a teacher with red hair, they used to call him Red Bull, but, uh, <laughs> so, but in English, so I don't know, so I know it just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then how would you say I'm related to the Jewish people? I don't even know the word for Jewish people. How, which way, mom's or your dad's side? My father's side. Different side. Father's side. Yeah. My mom. Why should she? she Jewish. How do you say she was a mouth? She's not that. Not that side. But the Jewish is the word. That's the word. And now Jewish. I don't know. There's no word. Word for they're, they're, they're always adding to the Navajo uh, dictionary. Uh, I don't know if Jew, Jew is uh, in there. It might just be Jew. This is just a teeny, teeny little sample. Um, this is nowhere near a complete list. Did, did you um, um, have copies of this? This will be on uh, Wiki. <laughs> yeah. But when dealing with documents, I tell people with the census records, um, they had specific rules for the Indian censuses. 
some of the rules which are going to carry on to the population census, which is the census that everyone else uses. Um, and the rule is going to be um, that if an agent found out that a name was considered to be foolish, cumbersome, uh, or had a hard time translating it into English, um, then he should change it. Uh, that's besides the fact that uh, the agent or the translator is doing a good job or not. Uh, or if it's even being written down the way it's supposed to be. Or a number of other issues. So, that so explain the last name Del Mar or that being in the area or something that just, it was just changed. So, uh, a couple of examples that I have. Um, so, this was my great grandpa, or, yeah, great grandpa. And, um, so he's the son of, uh, of this guy. <coughs> And um, basically, uh, he got this name is because when you take out this aspect, and where is that located? Canyon de Shea, because that's where he was from. That's where his family was from, and that's where he was living. And uh, and uh, basically, you know, he's a he's a small little dude living there. Uh, and then the long walk happened, and he got uh, taken to Fort Sumner, came back, yeah. met a girl. The girl's family was oh. from Navajo Mountain, so he moved up to Navajo Mountain. Up there, the census taker comes around, says, what's your name? He's saying, this is my name. And, uh, you know, the small guy living in the can uh, Canyon de Chez, kind of gets turned into small and canyon, because yeah. canyon de Shea. And so now we're small canyon. Mm -hmm. Versus uh, a cousin of mine, uh, you know, uh, Harry Face. Um, the time the census take, er, taker came around, he was pretty old, teeth falling out, uh, having a hard time talking, because he's super old. And um, and uh, couldn't really tr translate or figure out what he was saying, but he understood a thing, and he said, "Well, that's pretty close to that, so that's going to be your new name." And uh, the story I get from my cousin is she's just like, "I'm really glad I'm not known as Mary Harry Face." <laughs> But, uh, so, uh, it really just depends on a number of things. Names could change, and you got to keep that in mind when dealing with documents. So, every type of census was basically dates could change? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes, no. Uh, so, hopefully that narrows it down. <laughs> right. No. We have, you know, those things are in a microfiche, and if you compare, you know, the census yeah. are every 10 years. And you got to remember, uh, remember the first time the census uh, uh, came out, you know, on, and on Navajo was in the 1920s. So they're spelling uh, so, it phonetically. Uh, right. And then, and if you compare it to the 1940s, the names don't really change. And they're, they weren't interested in the names, they were interested in the number. Yep. That's all they were interested. There was a person yep. here, they had three people in there. And then, and what you, uh, what I, we found and is so that that's sometimes they link. They link the wrong, names. the wrong children to the wrong person is where we run into problems. And the, the census number, however, remains the same. And that's your key to the name changes. So, like you were saying, is their, their main concern was numbers. Because the more numbers you get, the more money you get. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you'll see a lot of generic names. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll say boy, girl. You don't have their names. You'll just say wife. Uh, or husband, or or whatnot, and so it does create some problems uh, uh, when doing this. On some of the Indian census, does it not say like white men's name and then 
The rule was that they were supposed to include the native name and then the English name, but the rule changes for later ones to where they just have the whatever name they're going by. But that the whole reason for that is the creation of uh, identification number, the census number, to help get rid of some of the confusion and to verify who really is a Navajo and who isn't, because they don't want to have the government doesn't want to have to pay more than they need to. So, can you find people by their census number? Yes and no. Yes. Just depends on uh, if the person who is providing information has it, or if the census census taker writes it down. They, they have. So sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So if they do, then can you find more? Go to the census office with your second right. great-grandfather's number and get, find out birth dates or anything else from them. It's yes helpful. and no. It's helpful no. from uh, from 1890 to about 1920. Uh, the, the census numbers that are really collected regularly but after that, you know, the social security numbers start coming in, people start changing their name, kids start going to school, and, uh, uh, and what Corey is saying is really true. And, uh, and I think he's going to talk a little about the names, because uh, people start uh, giving a different name and census, they go to school, they get a new name. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, I tell people you got to remember, the, the first Europeans to the area that are visiting with the Navajos, are the Spaniards. And so you'll have a lot of Navajos who all have Spanish names. Just because you find a Spanish name doesn't mean you're Spanish. They could, but doesn't mean you are. Not only that, you'll have people who are dealing with religion who are coming into the areas, people who are traders who are coming into the areas, and government uh, workers who are coming to the area. And so uh, <coughs> names will be changed to fit whoever the Navajos are dealing with. Uh, and so you might find a Spanish name, an English name, a Navajo name. Navajo names might change throughout their years. Uh, and so... Corey, that, yep. I think that when I, when I do the research, I have to keep in mind that the census people, these people that are providing this information are human, and they're all... There's errors in, you know, every, oh, yeah. every record that you find, and so the only way that you can verify that is you continue your research and do it over a period of time to see where it, you know, <clears throat> let's say a census number, I had a, um, I was trying to identify an individual who had a real common name with a census number, and, and then when I started researching, I found out in several census, his, his number, the census number has two numbers have been interchanged, mm -hmm. and so it's, it showed up different. And then three or four years later, then it was corrected again, and then three or four years later, it was, you know, uh, the incorrect number again. So you just kind of have to go through several census numbers, see yep. how the And the same thing with the names. Yep. Um, sometimes they're phonetically spelled, sometimes they're just, you know, based on description of the the individual. So yep. it just takes several years to verify that that information. Yep. It would have taken us quite a while to discover or to figure out what was happening to my mother then. This just happened just a few years before she died. <coughs> the, the census office uh, and uh, her said she knows her census number and her record was looked up, but it was not her name, not the name that she had had for all of her life that, that we knew. And uh, she was questioned, well, this census number is given to Nellie Begay. You know, the, and she said, oh, yeah, I used to be Nellie Begay. That was the name I was given. But her brother said that was an ugly name, a Nellinahalen. She says, it sounds like a <laughs> He didn't like the name, and so he changed it to a beautiful Catholic name, Mary Rose. Because he was Catholic. And so she was known as Mary Rose Begay forever and ever and ever, and that's all we ever knew her by. Then we could correct the census. 
But that was just only about two years before she died, and I just, I just think, and what, you know, we would have been totally confused if we had never known that, and it was just by chance we discovered it. <laughs> so, yeah. Is this the same person, all names for the same Yep. Person? So here's uh, my third great grandpa, <laughs> okay. well, known by uh, family members as Anthony, because he was a good basketball player. Because <laughs> he had some skills here. So, uh, after uh, the event in Tuba City, it's called White Man Killer, or Killer the Red Beard, or Red Hair, or whatever. He was the Kill Locksmith. Yep. And uh, uh, so, different ways that I've seen his name uh, on different records, depending on who's doing it. Uh, so, not only that, when you're looking up at City, here's some different versions from the census. I didn't write down everything. Why is Peshtal tied Because he was working with metals. Oh, that's what Peshtal guy is. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, because he was a silversmith. Uh, and, you know, there's more I could add to it, but just to give you an idea of the, the need to have an open mind when looking for certain names. Uh, and uh, when you're searching through different records, you need to keep this in mind. Uh, it doesn't make your job any easier, but it might help you find somebody. We have the connection to that. Spanish here, Patsidi, Silversmith, Pishka Gray is uh, Spanish would be Patero. Mm -hmm. That's oh, a silversmith. Yeah. That's where, that's where, that, we, that, that's around that's where we have a tie in my family. Mm -hmm. Some chose to retain their Patero name, some of them wanted to go with the English name Silversmith. So. It's a small world here. <laughs> uh, the other thing. Uh, we've already talked about this, is remember your areas. Uh, these change throughout time. Uh, you have records that are just dealing with uh, ship rock. You'll have records that are just dealing with, um, uh, where's the other place? Uh, Lup. Um, uh, and then the different agencies and whatnot. And you know, the boundaries are going to be changing, so I always tell people, check surrounding agencies. <clears throat> so here's the Indian census for my Shema Sana. Um, it says, you know, her name, she's Navajo. Um, she's considered a daughter of the man, which is not true. Um, and uh, so the man she's living uh, as who's considered the head and the mother and the children um, is actually um, her uncle. Here's the U.S. population census um, right here. Here she is, her name, and it says she's a niece. And this is for 1930. This was done in April. This was done in April of 1930. So uh, two separate census takers doing the same person, different information. Uh, as you can tell from the Indian census, it's very limited <coughs> in what type of information. Our census number would be over here in the dark part. Um, the population census, which is for everybody, um, it has a lot more information. Um, doesn't even include census for her on here. Sometimes they do put it on a population, sometimes they don't. Uh, and provides uh, other information, education and whatnot. Corey, this, this population census is really, it's really cool because in that one column, it, it tells the occupation of what mm -hmm. we did, and some of, some of them are very descriptive, and there's information like 
I was doing research for somebody and it said that this particular person worked on the railroad and yeah. you know certain railroads. So then I could go from there to the railroad company to yeah. and get the information. So yeah, my last day at the gym. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and I'm always, you know, where in the heck did that come from? Yeah. You know, did they, did, were they rounded up Indians and looked over and they said, well, he looks like Jim. We'll just call, we'll just call him last name Jim. Could be. And, and you do find a lot of Navajos with English last names, which is which happens a lot. Like Spanish last names. Yeah, I got three English last names. Yeah. Well, his grandfather was Navajo too. Oh, okay. Because so. they were doing the census, <laughs> and he didn't know how to spell his name, and so he was a no. Navajo Jim. Give him a name. Navajo Jim, and that's where you get a lot of your English. Yeah.